Hello everybody, um, this is Tom Matuska with the Matuska Tapestry Supply Company along with Brett Wingfield and our camera lady, Mandy Swart. Um, everybody say happy anniversary to Mandy. Mandy just had a big eight year anniversary. It did, and Tom has a big old birthday coming up Saturday, so let's oh give a big old God. happy birthday to you early. Anyway, whoop, whoop. congratulations to my favorite daughter and my favorite son-in-law on their anniversary. Thank you. Uh -huh. Today, last, last week I guess, to refresh, um, we uh, took our white-tailed deer and we um, showed you how to put ears in. We showed you um, how to uh, slide the cape on, antlers, took the antlers off, put the antlers back on. It was a tube cut and uh, uh, kind of positioned him and got him, I think we did the muzzle. You tucked some lips for him. Yep. And um, we ran out of time as we knew we would, so this, we stuck him in the freezer, put a bag over him, and fortunate for us, we have a walk-in freezer. So we just take him down, put him in the freezer, we pulled him out this morning, um, and this is how he's been. Even though a hide is, is tanned, you can still experience slippage, so you wanna take some safeguards. Either freeze them if you can't work on them, refrigerate them for short amounts of time, um, if it's gonna be out for any amount of time, you're not gonna be able to work on it. Uh, bactericide. Bactericide is a great thing to um, spray on your animals. Uh, hair slippage is caused from bacteria growth, um, which causes epidermal breakdown, and there's two components that make up, or that cause bacteria growth, and that is warmth, or room temperature like this, that bacteria can grow, or um, moisture. And so you're working with a wet cape, and even though it's tan, you know, they can slip. So we like to put bactericide, we give them a little spritz of bactericide, and, and that can inhibit any bacteria growth. It's good to have around your shop to clean up your tables, to do all kinds of things. Anyway, uh, today we're going to take this deer from the freezer. And it looks a lot like you did. <laughs> Mandy got a real scared look on her face. That's all you did last week. Um, looks a lot like like uh, he did when we left you last week. Now, from here, we position the nose, tuck the lips. We have very little nose skin, very very little tucking skin here. Um, not even enough. Usually, we take some saran wrap and, and tuck it in there to force the skin to take on the the shape of the inside of the nostril that you sculpted out. Um, we don't have that kind of extra skin here, so we're probably going to have to peel the skin back and you're smiling. I can't, I just can't wait to hear the comments. When Adam you're... Oliver says Crocs today. You know it, Adam. Yeah, Every day's a crack today. day in Tom and yeah. <laughs> um, We'll probably have to peel that skin back and either maybe super glue it or pin it carefully or something, yeah. anything to hold it into place. There's a lot of um, kind of epidermal breakage that's occurred coming back from the tannery on this muzzle and and there's nothing we can do with that now. We'll do it when we do finish work. We'll show you finish work in a couple weeks or so, and we will make this all come to life. Um, you're a repairman when it gets to things like this. So there are gonna be things on the deer that you have to fix. Um, the next thing we're gonna have to do is um, um, eyes, tear ducts, and finish the ears, and a whole lot of, of grooming and hair patterns. You know, hair patterns are really important. Um, nothing has been done to him as far as alignment. So, with that, um, should we start? We sure can. Do you want to talk about sewing? Oh yeah, we did. So uh, we sewed off I camera. Am, I sewed off camera just to save you the, the <laughs> board of, of me sewing. Um, I can draw on the board and I'll show you what we did. Um, Everybody will have their own favorite threads and needles. I myself need something that I can hang on to. Um, this is very, you know, it's kind of a big needle. It'll make some reasonably large holes in the hair. You're not gonna see it. You wouldn't sew up a bird like this. Um, but this is, what kind of number would you call that? Like maybe a number two? Sure. S-shaped yeah. needle. <laughs> You're the one that backs them up right <laughs> um, Anyway, I like a needle, the S-shaped needle, because I can really get a grip on it and I can force it through the leather. 
you shouldn't have to use much effort to push through your leather if you thinned it properly. You gotta thin it really, really good, um, and the needle should go effortlessly through the, through the leather. If you're using the pliers to get your needle through your leather, you're too thick, yeah. way too thick, and it's gonna cause shrinkage away from your antlers. So, I like to use a needle like that. I think uh, Brian Olson, one of our sculptors, I don't have one out here, but I think he uses a great big long straight needle. I like that. Well, I'm a little shorter than that, but it's a long straight needle. But again, I think the reason is you can get a hold of it. Now, if you want to, you can use a tiny, tiny little three-cornered glover's needle or um, stainless surgical needle and you can sew like that and it's gonna make the most beautiful stitches in the world, but nobody's gonna appreciate this over this. Um, so your go-to is the S-curve. I, I like the S-curve. That looks you, like you the size. What do you use? That I looks sew like the size little tiny one. Okay, he used sew the little tiny one, so. Uh, whatever, whatever works for you. Well, what's nice is you actually sell a variety pack, an assortment that has 15 different needles, and I believe it has the little ones, it has the big S-curve, it has all of them. Give you a chance to experiment with each one, because if we had 10 people in here, I bet we'd have 10, 10 different needles. <laughs> yeah. And then when it comes to thread, um, there's a variety, variety of, of cape threads. This is actually, and we use this for years and years and years, it's a bowstring, Thread. It's it's ultra strong. Um, it's waxed. Won't break down. Won't deteriorate. Um, we thought this was the best thing in the world for years. Throw a lot of spools of that. Yeah, and um, it's a little bit big. It's a little bit heavy. It's a little bit difficult to hide your stitching. You can you'll feel railroad tracks the heavier your thread. Now naturally, you wouldn't use something like that with a needle like this. You have to correlate your needle size with your thread size. Um, this is good, we still use this on moose and, and bigger animals, things like that, heavy haired animals. Um, our go-to thread, there's uh, something else that I used for years and years and years, was dental floss. Dental floss, I loved dental floss. Um, dental floss, when you, when you pull it tight, it flattens out because it's not graded. Um, dental floss works really, really good. Our go-to thread, as of the last few years, it's been Fireline, and uh, Fireline is very fine. It's very strong. It's made right here in Spirit Lake. Mandy, Mandy has a big sad look on her face because we don't sell it. I know. <laughs> um, but Fireline is extremely strong. A drawback with Fireline is it is so fine uh, you can cut through your cape. If you have to put any pressure on your cape, it'll slice right through and your finger and your finger. Um, I was in Alaska fishing one time and they wouldn't allow fire line on the boat because the salmon went across the back of the boat and the line went across somebody's bicep and cut it to the bone. Oh, man. Um, so fire line is very strong, very fine, slices easily. I like to use fire line and double it. A doubled line, you can put a little more pressure on when you're pulling. Yeah. You shouldn't have to if everything fits. No. Last <laughs> week, last week, Brett selected the form, and I had to put a little pressure on it. And um, that's why we sewed off camera. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, this is, I'd probably go, this is 10 pound, I'd probably do an eight double. Would do yeah. really, really good. Comes all the way down to, uh, we can probably get two pound fire line. Comes in different colors, white and, and the gray the colors, but it works real well. We do a lot of repairs. Whatever you sew with, make sure that there is no stretch. So if you're selecting a, a thread, put it between your hands and pull. And if you can feel elasticity, do not use it on your animals. Um, monofilament, people think monofilament's a good choice because um, it's clear and you wouldn't see it. When that hide, that hide has power when it shrinks and you're gonna get your seam pull apart because that monofilament will stretch. So whatever thread you choose, just make sure that there's no stretch in it. Now, I'll show you what my method. Um, I do a lot of prevention when I'm on a deer because um, when I started doing deer, everything happened. I mean, I had shrinkage, I had distortion, I had all kinds of things, mostly because I didn't know what I was doing. Um, so, you should have a cape that looks something like this. You've got your antler 
Numbers. I feel like we're playing Pictionary. <laughs> what is it? It's Big Bird. <laughs> um, get rid of the Big Bird size. Um, okay, so you're going to have a, your hamburgers are here. Here's your seam, whether it's a long seam or a short seam. You should be able to identify points. You should have a point right here. You should have a point here. You should have your center point like that. Point here, point here. Now some of you did a, a seven cut or a T cut. You'll still, whatever you, whatever you have, um, you'll still have um, the T incision like this. And you'll still be able to identify the points where those go together. So identify your points. I pull it around the <laughs> you look at my drawing buddy. Uh, I pull it around the antler burrs. If you flesh this as thin as it needs to be, you might have a sloppy antler burr. It may be a little bit on the sloppy side because you took off two thirds of the thickness of that skin and now you're putting it back onto the bone. So I'll position it around there, see what I have to work with. I may take a bite up here and up here to close it up a little bit better. I may even sometimes trim my antler burrs. Um, so we're gonna sew up a baseball stitch to put the cape on. Years and years ago when I started, um, I didn't know how thin things had to be. Um, and every deer that I did for two to three to four to 20 years probably, shrunk away from the antler burrs. And they go, oh man, you know? So every one I had to patch. So I had extra deer capes that I would cut little trims off and I either hot glue them or super glue them or whatever I do up in there. Every single one of them shrunk back. I'm just thinking that's taxed for me. That's what I got to deal with. Not knowing that what I really have to do is I have to thin this skin better. Thin skin does not have power. Thin skin will not shrink away. If you thin your skin, it's going to help you in many ways. One is you're going to be able to put your needle through real easy. Another way, it's not going to shrink away and it's going to lay better. So, we had a young man work for us by the name of Bubby Coon, and um, he showed me how to do a coin purse stitch around here, and I still do that to this day, and it's nothing more than a safeguard. Um, I'll take my needle, and I will go through the skin here. I will go up maybe about an inch, hook the skin, up about an inch, hook the skin, and you should have about five to six to seven of these little gathers. And here's my needle. Here's the loop that I started with. Now I will take that needle and will come through this loop and I will start gathering it and this will gather it like a coin purse. And if you take seven or eight of those little gathers, it's just like a little girl's leather coin purse, you know, that you get at the fair or something. And it can really neatly hold your skin around the antler. Then it's just nothing more than a baseball stitch. And what would you say your distance is? Distance between stitches? Yeah, maybe less than, less than a quarter. Less than a quarter so that when you pull them together, you actually have probably less than an eighth when going back and forth. But try the little coin purse um, gather if, if uh, you have trouble there. Now another thing I like to do is because you took some meat and tissue off of that bone and because you thinned your skin so much, I like to take like an angle worm's thickness of epoxy skull. I put it around my antler burr. Here's my antler burr just before I sew. I'll take a little ring of epoxy skull too thick, you're going to change your anatomy. A little ring of epoxy sculpt. I will sew up my deer and then I will take my fingers and I will squish that out in here and that makes a pretty good adhesive glue um, to hold, help hold that leather up there. So I do a lot of uh, prevention type things. A little bit of epoxy sculpt, not too much. Um, coin purse stitch 
a little color in that epoxy scope if you want to. Sure. Just antler burr, get to your medium brown color. So that's what I did to this. I sewed him up um, after we were finished last week. I pushed, I arranged all my skin. You'll have these little colics coming down the side, align those. I put all my skin where I wanted it, and then I smish the skin right down into that epoxy scope. You smished it. I smished, smished, it. It. smished it good. That's a new okay, I got some shout outs. John Barber is watching, says hello and happy. Hi, John Barber. Birthday. Holly's watching, Jeff Speck's watching, Dustin Sickle is watching, Jared Embry, Denny Riggs from Missouri, Adam Oliver is, was wondering about your Crocs, Dustin Bain, got a feeling I'm going to learn a lot today. Indeed, you are, Dustin. Jennifer Shelton, hello from Illinois. Denny Riggs, he sports the real camo Crocs in his shop as well, so you have, you're not alone. Um, Rush... Russell, hello from Michigan. Bill Jensen, hello. Kenneth Kipp is watching. John Daniels says hello. Chad Stewart's watching. David Prince, hello from Florida. Clint Ricky's watching and says hello. Roger Lawson. Chris Honing says hello. Gary Brook is watching. Brooch, how do you say? How do you say that? Oh, Gary fish, Brook. Yeah, Brook. I've been working hard on your fish heads in our catalog, Mr. Gary. Um, Mark Drexler says hello from Indiana. The best fish heads. Those are the best fish heads. We got Paul from Georgia. Um, John from Texas. So many people say hello. Tell us where you're watching from. Tell us what you're doing as long as it's appropriate, Mr. John Block. <laughs> um, we love hearing it. We are live every Thursday, 4.30 Central Time. And you can always go back on our Facebook. Make sure you like and follow us. And you can always rewatch these videos. You should walk around and talk. I'm good. It's been a long day for me. <laughs> um, it's really fun to hear all these names, and a lot of them are, are past students. Yeah. And uh, to see your work and to see Jared's chicken, Jared's your chickens are looking <laughs> really, really good. A uh, lot, of, lot of familiar names out there, people we've seen at shows, and um, it's fun to hear you. And I mean, I guess I'm kind of even honored that you turn in to listen to us because a lot of these people are pretty darn accomplished tax firms and to think they can learn something here flatters me, I think. Cool. Wheelie even stopped yesterday. Oh, Wheelie stopped. Wheelie? Yeah. I missed him? You missed yeah. him, came on his Harley. Oh, and man. He came in and unannounced, didn't let us know. Um, it would have been nice if we'd had a little bit of warning. <laughs> Next time, give us some warning and we'll- Do lunch. Know, spend the yeah. evening with you. Um, yeah, it's pretty fun to have him here again. <laughs> Thanks for doing that. Okay, so yeah, should, should, should we, uh, next thing, what do you want to do? Maybe eyes and tear ducts. I think that's a good place to start. Um, so, when we set the eyes in critter clay a couple weeks ago, we let them firm up. They're not dry hard, but we should have a really good shape. Um, and rather than go back through the three corner eye set, I think we'll refer you back to the previous when we set them. Um, but we're just gonna follow that shape. Um, so we've got some tuck skin here. Remember we trimmed that back when we prepped our cape to a very small amount. We've got probably an eighth of an inch, I'd say, um, of an apron all the way around the eye. And we're gonna tuck that in between the critter clay and the glass. So just wanna make sure that we've got enough space in there. I'm gonna check, I believe we have plenty of glue Make sure and check to see that you've got some high paste that's going to stick everything down. Um, I might want just a little high paste. We're using Dermagrip high paste. Uh, I'm just going to use a tiny little bit in front of the tear duct. Um, and it's easy to get to now um, while your eye is open. So if you question it, I'd make sure and add some. Um, Now you notice he's putting on a small amount of, of glue. Too much glue can cause you issues in anatomy and pretty soon you get big old squishy puddles under there. Yeah, we just took a tech call earlier this week. Someone had called and said that they had gotten an amount that a customer had recently done, had done at another taxidermy studio and there was a mysterious odor. And he said, what can I do? And so we kind of walked him through it and had the suspicion that I said, where, 
where's this odor coming from? And he went through, he said down around the brisket, in front of the shoulders. Um, that's old high piece. Yeah. And it's molded and bad stuff. So they want to see your eye detail. Which is kind of scary yeah. looking right there. <laughs> look like much right now um, but I'm just gonna identify the front corner in clay so our little car uncle is still showing right there I'm gonna bring How do you that get into the place tear duct from not pulling from the foam worm most important is to have really good thin skin um, also good shape to your tear duct um, some people will put a little roll of clay up in front. This new head that was recently sculpted has a nice shape to it, so I really don't want to add anything in front. I, that is the area that I put some more, just a touch more hide paste, but I'm just gonna taxi that skin, tuck, make sure I got that tucked in good. Which tool are you using? That spatula from the kit, but I'm gonna go back for the tear duct in just a second. So I went back from, from one to three. I'm gonna tuck in from, from uh, one to two. Would fire me. <laughs> um, it would be something that we probably wouldn't even identify right now. You wouldn't even know it. Um, but uh, we would have to make something up do, when we do the finish work. Um, so now I kind of have the general shape and I've got a hide paste all over the place here. So forgive me, I'm gonna clean that up um, in just a second here for you. Um, I'm gonna pull the skin back. Probably the most important thing to getting that tear duct to do exactly what you want it to do is making sure you have the skin taxied properly. Uh, most people will have issues because either the skin isn't thin enough or that the skin isn't, you can do yourself a great favor by bringing, this is just our gently to taxi a little bit of skin in toward the tear duct. I'm gonna bring some skin from back here, move all of the skin up over the brow Taxiing that down. I've got a little excess buildup right here. And proper placement of the skin is really going to do you a huge favor when it comes to how this deer dries. So it looks a little bit rough. Um, I will say the last, this will be about the last time I'll use a hard tool. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> They're going to see more. Um, this will be about the last that I use the hard tool on here. Um, from here on, after I get all of the skin tucked, I'm going to use a soft brush like this. So this will put, we'll do all of our shape with this brush. Pull it back. Clean that glue up too. Oh, we've got a nictitating membrane that I we must have used for amber must have stuck that in there. Um, and that's it's nice to put those in ahead of time. I would probably slide it in right now. Um, or you can wait and we may pull this one out um, because it's it's kind of moved. So we're gonna pull that out and slide it back when we do our finish work. Um, but if you wanted to, we could repo reposition it now um, and get it exactly where we want it. But give me a second to clean up this eye. Those membranes are difficult. Lori Gonnerine is watching. Oh, no. Oh, no. That Hi, means Mark's Lori. watching. Hi, Mark. <laughs> okay, I quit. Tom, it's your turn. I <laughs> <laughs> So now we're just going to bring all of this skin forward, identify that car uncle right in the front, like so. And then we'll probably come back tomorrow um, when, this soft, when this firms up just a little bit and we'll 
we'll bring this crease in. I don't like to do that really heavily now. Um, it's actually nicer to do the second day. Wow. <laughs> Mark's got me, yeah, Mark's got me all nervous. Gee whiz, no pressure here. So something like that, that'll give us a good start and we'll we'll move on over to the other one. I've got just a little skin right here I can bring into the tear duct as well. Where's that little, did you have a, uh, right here. The detail tool. So this is the, the detail tool that we cut the tear duct with. And this one, Tom has taken the point and the edge off of, and it works really well to use this same tool to actually tuck and it will turn and we can tuck that skin right up under just like we cut it in there. Looks like I've got a little glue right there. And we'll go over and do the same thing on the other side. Yeah. Ooh, Blake says, as am I, Dad and Pat are working on the form tonight and Brian is coming down this weekend. I heard. Oh my goodness. That's going to make some people very excited, Mr. Blake. I already knew that. Hmm. That's going to make some people very busy. Fire up the fiberglass factory. Get more glue. just going to go through and do the same thing. I'm going to start by identifying the front corner. There's a little hole here that we're going to end up, we'll have to fix that uh, when we do the repair work. I'm going to identify the front corner, tuck on both sides of that car uncle, and then I'm going to work my way back. What depth and angle are your eyes? Do you have to recess the form for your eyes? Um, good question. Very, very good question. Every form company is different and these are a urethane product. So the, they're made in a, in a fiberglass mold that, that urethane is poured into and then there's expansion and, and timing is, or forms out of molds that can cause things to distort or change slightly. But for the most part, this competitor's choice head, um, we should be able to use for a standard look, just use the back nice angle there. Gosh, I don't know if they're exactly 45 and 45 or if they're 42 and 42, but they're um, slightly forward looking. Um, we're using the pre-rotated eye, so our expression is um, works in there pretty good. You can um, alter your eye angles and rotation. We didn't talk a whole bunch about eye rotation, but if you did want to do um, some additional rotation to those, I would say um, change that back plate just slightly to give yourself plenty of room into a funny angle. Why do y'all worry about the detail so much on the eye before you put the hide on? Um, great question. The Most of the time, the answer to that would be, we like to see our end result as much as we can see, um, especially when we teach. For, for those that haven't done this before, um, it's never gonna be better than it is when you set it, when you, when you initially set it. Um, so it's, it's something that we would do, really try to get our expression established, our eye rotation and angle, and our overall shape um, in place ahead of time. Now, when we're, when we're working through these um, in the shop, we won't spend near as much time, but for illustrations for, for you guys, because we have such a wide variety, 
experience out there from those that around. Um, there, we, we tried to show as much detail as we could, and it is easier to see in clay than it is with the skin on it. So I'm gonna go back to that detail tool. My arms are getting tired, you gotta speed up a little. <laughs> we always wanna make, make the mannequin look alive. Yeah, there you go. Be then we're halfway the there. Yep. Okay, so again, still pretty rough. Um, I'm gonna go back and soften all of this with that soft brush. Um, but this will kind of give you a start. We've got our one corner, three and two. So one, two, three, and we'll come back and we'll, I can't really, without getting straight on and looking at this deer, I can't really even tell what I'm looking at, so. How would you fix an eye that's missing part of the lid? Um, that's probably a better question for our finish work, um, which we're gonna show you after this has had a little bit of time to dry. We have that a lot, we, I mean, we get, Zero back from the tannery. We have a really nice moose back from the tannery that that's looks like they skin the eyes out with an axe. I mean, it's pretty bad. And you'll get really crafty with your epoxy sculpt. Uh, sometimes you actually have to paint hair in. Yeah. You know, you'll you got to fix it because the customer's not going to take it that way. I remember you telling the story of somebody coming in and cutting a bunch of hair out. Gary Zayner at the Iowa Taxidermy Association one time, two, 30 years ago. Um, they gave him a Roger Dowling, I think it was Roger Dowling's deer to finish because he needed something for a seminar. And he said the eyebrows were all wrong and he cut them off with a knife, mm -hmm. hair and all. Oh my gosh. And repaired it. You couldn't tell. At six inches, you couldn't tell. How do you keep the front corner of your eye from pulling? Thin. 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 <laughs> thin, thin, thin. Um, if anything pulls, you're, you're too tight on your mannequin or your skin is thick. Uh, if you thin your, your, I mean, there's a lot of problem areas to be concerned with. Uh, nostrils, lips, uh, tear ducts, eyes, antler burrs, ears drumming. Uh, brisket drumming. There's all kinds of problem areas, and if you thin your skin, if you're having trouble now, thin it twice as much as you think you need to, and uh, I'm guaranteed that will probably solve your problem. Um, we put little brad nails in the front corner for a lot of years. Yeah, we used to do that. Um, thinner, the thinner your skin is, the less you'll find yourself pinning. Um, Gosh, how many pins do you think we used to put in these deer? <laughs> we used to, when, when mannequins became more and more detailed, we used to use little galvanized brads, and we would put in 300, maybe. Yeah. A lot. And then you'd say, go back and put 300 more in. <laughs> and we would put it in all the different, uh, all the, any place that there was a place that it could draw, here, 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 we put these little brad nails and we would sink them in the hair with a brad pusher. And uh, if you couldn't feel them, you'd never see them. They were, uh, I think they're nickel plated, so they never rust. And um, it worked for a long time. The other alternative to that was to babysit your deer tomorrow and the next day and the next day. And we have over the years got away from the, the brad nail detailing and uh, going to a good hide paste and roughing our forms and, and uh, just coming back and babysitting them. You'll always want to come back the next day and kind of work your deer over. And the day after that, and the day after that. Just trying to do all the things that I should have done while the camera was close and Mark was making me nervous. Nice glasses. Oh, <laughs> yeah, somebody's getting old. So Mandy came in with Asking the- Asking you shall we receive. all know the story of the initial magnifying glasses, which I'm not near old enough to need, but I tried them out. And then all of a sudden I realized these two power glasses 
were a little on the weak side, maybe I'm a little older than I was willing to admit. So I asked, a few other people have asked, and all of a sudden a week ago? Mm -hmm. Did you get them about a week ago? I did. Um, the three power lighted glasses came in and yes, I am wearing them, not because we're advertising for them, because I've had them on my head all day. And your 32 I'm that millimeter old. eyes just went to 40s. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, they're the same no, size my... as the two point. And they are online right now, along with replacement batteries for the hats and the glasses. Oh, nice. nice. You actually get 50 hours of work time with the glasses right At now. At least, as long as you don't leave them on. Don't leave them on. That's a long time. Those LEDs don't eat up batteries like a like the old incandescent, incandescent ones. Okay, there's still an awful lot of work. We've got only a little bit of time left. I know you still want to talk about stapling them off, if you want to do that, or hair patterns and grooming. We have a long ways to go. Go ahead and groom him a little bit, and then I'll, uh, I'll uh, staple him. Lori Connery wants to know, well, I assume this is Mark asking, what's the dirt on Brett's face? Dirt on Brett's face. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. That's, that's silver dirt, Mark. Silver dirt. <laughs> I don't think there's silver in there. It's pretty silver. Ha, ha, ha. Um, that's why we need the three power glasses. <laughs> um, so now, this guy's been in the freezer. Um, we kind of just stuck him in there. I, I don't know that we've spent a whole bunch of time taxing his skin, so... This is kind of where we make our money, right? Taxidermy. Taxidermy. Um, we're gonna move this, start moving the skin around, make sure that we've got our hair patterns um, lined up. Um, feels probably need some Boop. high paste up under there. And there's a lot of good high paste on the market. Um, we're using Derma Grip. Derma Grip seems to work fine for us. Um, Pro One. A lot of people use Pro One. Roman 555, um, the black, are they need uh, black uh, nitrile. Cool. Nitrile? Nitrile. Yep, yeah. nitro gloves. Um, yeah, that's tight. You just want a high paste that sticks, and any of the high paste on the market are basically a derivative of some kind of wallpaper or carpet style adhesive. Um, so if you find one that works and you can get reasonably, that's what we use. Jesse Wells says that he got his tax term shirt the other day. Oh yeah? And it's great. Really? Mm-hmm. Black one or a pink one? I don't know. Black or pink, Jesse? I'm rocking the pink one. Black. Black. The original. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Now, when I called with the high glue issue, um, used to be in the old old days we used dextrin based glue. And dextrin base was made up of uh, yellow dextrin, which is corn flour, and uh, kind of a wallpaper base is what it turned out to be and it didn't have the, uh, I don't know, the things that don't mold and get rancid and that sort of thing. And it, it, uh, if you had big amounts of it, like in a puddle, um, it didn't take too long for it to start getting kind of smelly. And the new, any of the new glues tend to not have the dextrin in them and the wheat paste and things like that. So. That doesn't seem to be an issue anymore. Okay, so now pull this back and start to align the skin. Michelle, just call in and ask. We do have some fourth zip um, in stock, but they're just not on the website. But if you call, they'll let you know the sizes we have. Quarter zip? Yep. Wow. What's a quarter zip? The one Brett's wearing. Oh. 
think we have green and red available. Um, so we're just going to identify the bleeding edge of the front shoulder, the front of the leg, which oftentimes is right here on the cape. This is the front of the leg, so we know that we know this hair pattern changes. Can I show one thing in it? This is something that I'm going to wreck your work here. This is something you'll see on a lot of, lot of work is deer mounted by up the side of the animal. Um, and that's form, maybe the way they stretched it around, yeah. uh, more than likely they weren't paying attention, but that collect should lay right on that leg bone. This is the front of the leg right here, so we know that we can see, we can identify that from the, from the skin. So I'm just going to put a couple pins in place to hold this for now. same thing on this side. It's all about skin placement. For the next several minutes, we're going to go through and just make sure that all of the skin is aligned where it should be. Not much extra tape on this deer. The brisket, we want to make sure the brisket is coming together. I think, I don't know, when I look at a, at a shoulder mount deer I think it's one of the first things I see the brisket. is the brisket the people that spend time organizing and arranging the hair patterns in their brisket I think you can really see it in the rest of their work too and as you noticed a lot of the when he was adjusting the skin he was pulling it forward not always back yeah um, a lot of people start at the face and they and pretty soon the ears are down on the neck and the brisket is off the form. Um, you know, kind of keep pulling your skin forward, yep. not to the extent to get wrinkles, but to yep. align it properly. Same with fish, same with birds, same with mammals. So I think we've got this. Once it's stable, center. there's no move in it. So, <laughs> so spend a little time doing this now because you can end up with something you aren't happy with. Mandy's in my spot. I would normally be standing right in front well, of this and looking me. right down the middle. I'm just no. staring at the dirt on your face. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Yeah, so I think that's pretty much where we want to be with that. Run a grooming brush through it real quick and just make sure there's no wrinkles hiding in there. A lot of times if you'll groom through your hair, um, any little wrinkles will telegraph through right here. This is a good example. See this little bump? In the skin there's there's something going on here um, you can see just a little indication I'm guessing that's either skin or a pocket of glue so we're gonna want to get that out now we don't want to have this stapled off and yep just a little bit of skin gathered up in that one spot right there get that out These little brushes are really nice for working this, working in the brisket. You're using the work. mini right there. Yeah, this is the mini. The angle one is actually that's the one I was reaching for. While he's upside down, really want to make sure that we've got the white patch taxied properly. That's something that really shows a real identifying marking on these deer. Some, some deer will have a real predominant white patch, some won't. Um, I'm going to bring this skin along the jawline. A lot of times we'll, you'll see the white patch is compressed and it looks very small and some deer have very little, some deer have a lot, but um, I've noticed that if you spend some time taxiing around it, oftentimes it's a lot bigger than we think it is. Um, so make sure that you have it defined, you have your skin around the jaw. 
um, properly aligned and you'll see that in the white of the throat. Make sure that it's on center. That feels pretty good. And I think we're about ready to... Staple? Yeah. One supply particular customer I've ever had and he wanted his deer a real extreme, you know, right turn, left turn I think it was, and uh, it had to be certain degrees and everything and I measured it out and I thought I did a really nice job of mounting this deer and had it done, sent him a card, told him it was done and he calls me up on Saturday and he said, I'm gonna be down to get my deer. I said, okay. So I always like a little warning so I can go out and make sure I don't have a pin that I forgot to take out of it and the invoice is all correct and everything. And I looked at the throat patch and I was way off center on the throat patch, way off center. And I'm just sick to my stomach. You know, I'm thinking, oh no, I mean, it's not gonna fly, it's bad. <laughs> and it's been mounted for three weeks. So he gets down there and he looks at it and I'm thinking maybe he won't notice it. And all of a sudden he goes, oh, just what I wanted. Yep, oh, you got the right amount of turn and everything. Oh, wait, the throat patch is way off to the left, you know, or to the right. And I thought, oh, he saw it and he said, well, it would be. He said, you got him turned sharp, the skin stretching. You thought of everything, didn't you? <laughs> I said, yeah, I mean, it was a total screw up on my part and he thought I did it on purpose. <laughs> so I got lucky that time. Travis says 262 viewers. They were telling me last week that they had 800. And as, I, 800. and as I looked, I was like, oh my gosh, these people came for a couch auction. The couch. They came for the couch. <laughs> somebody put a couch for sale on Craigslist, which helped out a lot. <laughs> and then some Saturday, somebody picked up my couch. I'm still sitting on boxes. <laughs> okay. Um, you all done? Yep, all done. That's all of you. Okay, now... Um, there's a lot of different ways, lots of different ways to finish off this deer and typically for us we're going to staple them off. If we do a pedestal mount, a lot of times we will take the skin, stretch it off the back, cut it maybe what half inch long and, and cardboard it and allow it to dry that way and then we will come in and trim it flush. So we never stapled, we never pinned, we never did anything. Um, all we did was glued it to the form and cut it off flush. Um, there's a lot of different ways to do that. So I like to make my, my uh, backs neat. Um, people don't see them when it's hung on the wall, but I still feel better. You've got a slug hole right on the edge there that, <laughs> that you didn't fix. That I didn't pull off. <laughs> It's a nice stand you got there. Bob, father and mine stand. Pinned everything in place, which is very helpful so that when I start stapling, I don't pull the brisket up, the, the arm pulled up on the side, I won't get the brisket misaligned. So as a safeguard still, even though he pinned that for me, I am going to put a staple in some strategic areas here so that this can't move. I don't want it to move. So I can pull real hard down here if I have to, and I'm not going to distort this up here. Um, I'm used to the years. We use the spring stapler. Use a spring stapler and go to a air-driven stapler. You're going to think you died and went to heaven because they're very, very, very helpful. I'm going to gently. He should have all of the wrinkles off of this out of the hide. There's no big gathers or wrinkles or anything like that. Sorry. Oops, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am going to. I don't want to pull on this and change what he's done. I'm going to put a staple in the wood right there. I'm going to do it in the recess of the armpit. I'm going to line up the center of the brisket with the center of the form. You can put two or three in there if you want to. I'm going to do the same on this brisket or arm pit. And here's another arm. Now, sometimes you'll have forms in your and everybody fights, all taxidermists fight to get wrinkles out. Nobody wants wrinkles in their work. Um, animals have wrinkles. Um, 
Sadie, yep, we're on the eye. Mm -hmm. um, Sadie, if you look at Sadie, um, she's got wrinkles coming up from our armpits. Our live deer have wrinkles coming up from right through here. It's when your skin gets compressed, it just is. But as taxidermists, we try to get rid of all that. Um, Okay. Sadie's the dog, in case anybody was wondering. That's a <laughs> It's my wife. Not your no. grandma. It's a, <laughs> this is a lot like often whether you're doing an antler mount or um, deer, you have to work the leather a certain direction. And if you do antler mounts or stretch rugs, you kind of get used to how to pull leather. Okay. <clears throat> this slug right hole here. was right here. Oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Let's see where that slug hole lands. And right here, it's in a bad spot with a little tug. I can get it off. Good? Yes. Did I wreck everything here? <laughs> nope. Your eyes going squishy. Oh, there you now. Okay, now, now I'm going to put another couple staples right up on the back. Now, I have divided my skin into two halves. Way easier not to get wrinkles that way. Just the back of his shoulders, just stapling, 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 stapling. My method of doing it is, is to turn him on the side and I'm going to start, I'll start at the shoulder. Do you need a stool? I can't do it without, without sitting down. I'll get it for you. Oh yeah, my little white stool. Steal my little white stool. Don't forget it. Which is coming up. Now, um, some people think that the back of the deer, nobody sees, it goes against the wall. Um, I'm gonna need a better scalpel probably. Um, so why do a neat job? Um, I just like it looking nice back there because the customer does. Okay, if you can come over here, I don't know if you can see. I want a staple to the wood. I'm going to cut about three inches. I'm going to grab that leather, hook the edge of it, and staple. And then I'm going to come back here, and I'm trying not to staple hair. Oops, there, that wasn't so pretty. and I go three to four inches at a time. And as you pull, you're pulling that skin off of the back of the form, so it's gonna to wanna to recede back. And my staples are gonna be nearly touching. You're at 388 viewers and there's no couch for sale. Just stapling did it. Stapling did it. I was afraid I was gonna have to my TV. I know. No, I might have to switch your places. Yeah. And we won't make you watch the whole thing here. I'll, I think you'll get the idea. Um, He's wearing the definition on the back. Pull it over. Don't get the hair. Try not to get the hair. You'll get good at it after a while. Put a staple, thumb over the hair, staple, thumb over the hair, staple, thumb over the hair. And you can go really fast. And I'm getting up into the wood. But that's what that's going to look like when the cut better than most, and it's a commercial staple, staple job. So, we do have a giveaway from last week, which was the modeling tool set, which you guys have your favorites. But it is this guy. I think this is the one Brett was using to tuck the yeah. eyes. And the shorter one is... For what? What do you all use it for? Everything. Everything. So these two. Worth it. Corey Hammett. So Corey 
let us know your information and we will get that sent out to you. Not from Canada, is he? Better not be. <laughs> <laughs> We've been picking our giveaway winners are like Australia and Canada. It's like, oh man, it's getting expensive. Um, don't forget the three power lighted glasses are on line yes. along with the batteries. If you guys are, if your batteries are wearing out. We're live every Thursday at 4.30. Um, go and check us out. You can rewatch all the videos. So if you got here late and you want to see what you missed, you can go back and watch it. We are Matuska Tax and Resupply Company. We are located in Northwest Iowa, Speedy Zone, for those of you that are in the Speedy Zone. Go ahead and give us a call. We also do a taxidermy school, Northwest Iowa School of Taxidermy. And uh, school starts in January, a nine-week yeah. course, so give us a call if you're interested in that. 1-800-488-3256. I think it is, too. Yeah. But we always love having you guys here. Go online, call us with any questions. Ask for Tom or Brett, not me. That's starting to look like something. Looking good. Um, we really all want a view of it tomorrow or the next day. Maybe we can post a picture or two after we... What's next week's this. giveaway? The angle grooming brush, right? So we're going to be for next week's giveaway. If everybody gets in those hard to reach places. I bet Mark wants one of those. Mark, he probably has like 10 of them in his shop. Um, so all you have to do is like this video right now, lots of hearts and bubbles, and share it. Make sure you share it. That's a very important one because we only pick the people that like and share and tag a friend in the comments. And you tag a friend by hitting the at sign, start typing their name, it shows up, pick them, and you are in for your chance to win, which will be next week. And next week you guys are talking about what? I think next week we were going to give them a break, not next week. Be fun. Um, they've got lots and lots of fun projects going on. Um, we've got the crocodile. We've been molding a crocodile head. We've got a gorgeous bobcat sculpture going. Um, we've got white tail fish coming out of our ears. Um, and we have a lot of things. Yeah, we do. To show you. And happy Labor Day. Yeah, yeah, three day weekend. Jesse's wondering when the new catalog is going to be ready. And Jesse, I am out of town next week for my Where are you be? husband's work trip. Not important. But <laughs> as soon as I get back, I am busting it for you guys to get our new 2019 catalog out. How because many new we are, products you got? I heard there's a lot. We have 400 new what? products for you guys. Yes. And it kind of keeps, you guys keep bringing me stuff and I keep taking them, so we'll see. But we're hoping the new catalog is going to be hitting around November 1st, 30th, uh, January 15th. No, no, we're trying. I'm going to try really hard to bust it out and get it done for you guys. So. It's going to be the Matuska Big Book. It's yep. Getting bigger and bigger it's getting bigger thick. Bigger. I think we're adding, I'm trying to talk them into adding 16 pages, so that's exciting too. Cool. Yep. Talking mom into it, I guess. I yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks everyone for tuning in, and don't forget to watch them next week. You guys gonna have to sell a couch again to get those viewers without me. <laughs> I think we did good when you were not. You here did do good. Nobody wants to see me. Thank you, everybody. All right. Thanks, yeah. you guys. Yeah. Tune in, and don't forget to go like and um, follow our page so you can rewatch and get notified when we do these. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you next week. Thank you. Thank you.